Shalom. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim. The clock with Dash is not going to be long. Anyway, I'm going to speak on one video and then I'm going to go to another video. And uh, the first video is uh, on YouTube, which is actually originally from uh, PBS. Uh, entitled Slave Slavery by Another Name. Because what I did was I put in, I went to Google and I put in the word slavery to see what would come up. You know, I mean, everybody talks about slavery going back in the history, you know, Stronger nations took down weaker nations and enslaved them. The Roman Empire, what they basically did was enslave the people by a thing called tribute, which is a tax. As long as you pay your taxes, they ain't going to give you a hard time. We're not going to work you in the field. But they did put people in slavery too, which uh, John, uh, on the Isle of Patmos, he was put in slavery. Okay, so... Romans put you in slavery. You know, when the gladiators were all slaves. And um, you, if you fought, if you were a great fighter and you fought and won a number of, of uh, gladi gladiatorial events, you received a, uh, a wooden sword by the, uh, by the emperor and you were free. So you had, and Jake's dominated that, the gladiator thing, all the champions, Going back during that time period, among the gladiators, they were all Jake. But uh, when they make movies, they always get Edomites and put steroids in, in them and make you think that those are the great uh, warriors. All right. Anyway, the name of the video is Slavery by Another Name. If you just put this in Google, it might take you to PBS. It might take you to YouTube. Uh, anyway, um, basically the the uh, the trailer the trailer uh, um, basically says S slavery continued even after the so-called slaves were free. We're still in slavery today. But it's a different kind of slavery. We're not we're not on a plantation. But anyway, um, like I said, when I put in, wrote the word or typed the word slavery, it took me to this uh, site, which is a PBS original site. So I said, let me see if it's on YouTube. So it says slavery by another name, and um, I pray the most I give me the spirit to really watch it, whether I watch it in pieces or or whether I watch the whole thing, but. The first damn minute, I said, man, I got to watch this. And um, we already know the scriptures on that. Anyway, let me let me let you listen to a little. I don't even know if I should do that. I don't even know if I should do that. Well, look there. Look at that. That's Jake and slavery. You know? Read, read the uh, 13 and 14 amendment. I think it's actually the 13 amendment. It said neither slavery of the constitution, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist except for a, as a punishment of crime. So every Jake that's in the prison system is a slave. You committed crime, you were processed, you receive what they call due process. And normally what they'll do is they'll tell you, if you go to trial and you and you lose trial, you're gonna do 30 years. But if you if you willing we'll give you a plea, you can go, you can go for five years. And Jake is nervous. A lot of these Jakes, they do belong in the system, but a lot of them don't belong in the system. And then you don't have the money to get get a, a real lawyer. 
you don't have the money to get the dream team, uh, you're going to get an appointed lawyer, a public defender. Anytime I've been in the system, I always got a public defender. But I have to say, the public defenders that I got were <laughs> them, them motherfuckers knew what the hell they were doing. You know, these were tigers, as they call in the law prof profession. You know? <clears throat> so I'm like, my thing is not, nah, I ain't playing, I ain't tell you, I ain't playing out on nothing. You know, at one point, it was myself, uh, a, a apostle, a Gabar apostle, we're calling the apostle and rhyme law. It was us four. And we got uh, snatched up by the popo over some bullshit and we went to the system and then you know what these motherfuckers plead if you if you they pleaded down to seven days community service and i remember <laughs> rick Kirkar <Kirkland> said <laughs> first he said fuck that he said i ain't i ain't going into slavery man fuck that <laughs> so we said no do you know these motherfuckers pled that shit down to one day of community service and we said fuck you and you know what they did they, they said, man, we're tired of looking at these guys. Get them the hell out of here. Anyway, that's just a story, you know? But that was slavery. The community, you see Jake with the orange, not, not, not necessarily orange, but you see them with the same work clothes and you think they work for the city. No, nah, they, they're in slavery. They, they're in slavery, man. They're in the parks, cleaning up uh, leaves and shit, you know? Anyway, we have never been freed from slavery. You know, in order, in order for us to be truly free from slavery, Esau got to bring us back to our land, tell us who we are, and compensate us. That's why Jake is talking about the uh, uh, reparation. Reparation is compensation. They did that to the Japanese, I believe the Germans and the Italians, because they didn't just arrest the Japanese and put them in internment camps during World War, was that World War II? They did it to the Germans, the Italians, and the Japanese. Then they came up with this whole story. Years later, they said, okay, we're gonna compensate you. When was this, the 70s? We're gonna compensate every Japanese that, were, that, were, that uh, served time in the uh, encampment that either they or if they died, their children or their children's children, I believe it was $10,000 $10, a family. You got to do the history on it. Here we've been in the worst slavery. Like I said, go to Google, just put in the word slavery, and the main things that's going to pop up is the, the slavery that we went through. And that's nothing but a, a fulfillment of a Deuteronomy uh, 28. When you read that whole chapter, the first 15 verses, then you read the 16, 15, 16 on down to the end, it's talking about the curses. And then it says in uh, Jeremiah 30, as a matter of fact, let me get that. And I said I was going to make this long. I'm almost done. Uh, Jeremiah 30. It's a short chapter. You really got to read the whole chapter. 24, uh, 24 verses, right? But I want to just pick out a few verses. You know what? Let me start from the second verse. Thus speak, speak of Yahweh, the Most High of Israel, saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So our salvation is inside of that book. That's why we always run to the scriptures. It says, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book, which represent the book, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, the, the, book, the book of uh, first Peters, second Peters, first Corinthians, uh, Isaiah, everything is written. He that run may read, he that readeth it, uh, he runneth that, that readeth it, Habakkuk, I'm paraphrasing. Anyway, it says,
third verse. This is a beautiful chapter. Jeremiah 30, verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Israel, meaning the kingdom of Israel. And a, a Christian, you can, you can say, okay, you're a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I've been reading the Bible all my life. How old are you? I'm 72. I said, could you break down Jeremiah 3, 30, verse 3? What's the difference between Israel and Judah? They don't even know the history. <coughs> That's talking about Israel, the kingdom of Israel, <coughs> and the kingdom of Judah, or Yahweh, Yasha Allah and Yahweh, northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Say of Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So this has not happened. This, this, this is yet to happen. Seven verse, key verse. Alas, but that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. So there's only one Jacob's trouble. And Jacob's trouble is going to come when all hell breaks loose. When Yahweh Shai come, the, the Michael, the angels, the missiles, the destruction, the earthquakes. And that's going to happen inside of an hour. That's Jacob's trouble. It says, uh, a verse, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. We're not going to be in slavery no more. And it mentions, it says, the yoke, the yoke from off thy neck. Let me do so. I should just put in yoke, but I'm going to put in yoke from off thy neck. <clears throat> See what comes up. Then I'll try the word yoke. Let me go to in images. Boom. There we go. Here we go. That's what pops up. Now you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put in the word yoke. Just put in the word yoke. Uh, yoke of iron. Let me try that. Yoke of iron. Boom. Yoke of iron. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 coming to pass. Chapter 28 starting from 47. This man right here is wearing a Hebrew garment. He's got a beard on his face. Most Hamites don't have beards. This is an Israelite with his Hebrew garments on and a yoke around his neck. These have a lot more pictures, but Issa be taking these pictures down. Um, let me go to this one. And some of these motherfuckers look like actual hamites, especially that one. That might have been a hamite mixed in. But uh, this is the Egypt. What the hell? 
Okay, it says the Egyptian Hollywood never shows you religion nine, and it says Nigeria. Now we know the Nigerians are Israelites. Oh, they got the they got the corn rolls, corn rolls and braids and everything. And this it doesn't give you the year, but it shows you got these are women now with mallets, no shoes on. They got the dresses on. A turban. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute now. You got a guy with a turban, a woman with a turban. And you got, and, and it's sha these are women, and they're shackled up. They're shackled up. They're yoked together. This right here is an actual picture. Look at that. Ooh, it's a killing a black person by kneeling on his neck is as old as slavery. George Floyd was, was the latest victim. Now you see, see them yoked up. These are Israelites. This guy is standing guard in case any of them escape. How the hell are they going to escape when they yoked up like that? And Esau doesn't want to deal with this subject. I, I wasn't even dealing with the subject, but it, I wanted to say a few words and move on. Uh, look, this, this right here, uh, in Mexico, you could be free. They didn't care what color you your skin was the little known story of the escape route of the American slaves to the South. You see them, they got the, they yoked up hard. That's called hardcore slavery, man. They put the jewelry on me a couple of times. This is why they want to, Esau want to pass laws to not go into the full history of America. There you go, shackled up, chained up. These are Israelites. <clears throat> A database that lets you see if your if your wealthy ancestors own slaves. Maybe y'all should go on that database, find out who you own, and send them a fat check. But you still getting, you still got to go into slavery. He that leads into captivity should go into captivity. Here we go, another one. Black Lives Matter: New Hidden Slave Trades uh, Sites in Well and Wells Revealed. So they wasn't just doing it over here in Babylon. You see the yoke, and this yoke is made out of wood. You see the woman with a baby behind her uh, got a, look like she got a, like that, that shackle right there is tied to her neck. Payback is a bitch, Esau. That's why this clown uh, I just I was just watching some some of uh, the debate between uh, what's this guy Chris Harris and uh, and Vocab Malone, and I had to turn away from it. Then I came back maybe a half an hour later. Uh, Vocab is a he's a fucking clown, man. He's a fucking clown. Esau doesn't have any shame. Which one fits fit the curses? <coughs> and the title of this video is uh, what what scriptures come to mind? Hebrews in captivity. 
not for this segment alone. And there's he, 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 the scriptures on this subject come out. Boom, boom, boom. But I'm going to go into another quick subject. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me come back to Jeremiah. I, I took out oak, uh, a yoke from off thy neck. You had a physical yoke. Now you have a invisible yoke. But it says here, and will burst thy bonds. Let's look at the word bonds. So we're still in captivity to this day. A bonds definition, let's see what the bonds mean, okay. Uh, bonds definition in Vestopedia. What is a bond symbol definition? They keep using financial. Let me put it in bond. Let me see how that comes out. Bond. I don't like these definitions. Let me see. Uh, bond definition law. Let's deal with that. Let's look at that. We'll be taking things out of this, out of the group, out, out of the group. Okay, let's try this one. Bell and bonds. Bell bond definition. Okay, let me, let me, uh, okay, what is a bail bond? A bail bond is an agreement by a criminal defendant, which is us, to appear for trial or pay some of money set by the court. A bail bond is consigned by a bail bondsman who charges the de defendant a fee in return for guaranteeing the payment. The bail bond is a type of security. When you deal with a bail, and, I, and I've dealt with a bail's bond, you go into slavery. They give you a stack of contracts to sign, including the UCC. I believe uh, the elder uh, Malcolm from out of uh, GMS Chicago knows about that. He deals with law and courts. Um, there's a, a a certain part of the law known as a UCC, Universal Commercial Code. And you don't hear about that every day. Most lawyers don't even know about the UCC unless you are you specialize in contract law, international law. Anyway, uh, when I was signing them down, it wasn't just me, it was me and the brothers. When we were signing them contracts and say UCC, I said, oh shit, what they know about the UCC? Because, because you can get out of an agreement on a contract by the UCC. So they, they covered that too. So it's slavery. If you sign those contracts with the Bell's bondsman, you pay that money, which is a percentage of the, of the, uh, the bell, and you don't show up, guess what? You ain't going to get that money back. And when they kept your ass, they're going to lock your ass up. So that's slavery, that's a bond. That's a yoke, a spiritual yoke. Anyway, you know what? Let me come back here.
Let, let me see what it says in the, in, in the Hebrew. Okay, for, for it shall come to pass in that day, say, say of Yahweh, of hosts, of the armies, I will break his yoke from off that. So the yoke that's on us now is a, a paper yoke uh, by, by way of adhesion contracts. Uh, when you get a driver's license, you get an application. It's really an ad adhesion contract. Social Security is an adhesion contract. When you work on your job, you got to sign papers. Ad adhesion con uh, contract, which is, is, which is a paper yoke. From off thy neck and will burst thy bonds. Let's see what, let's see what bonds is in Hebrew. Mawa, Mawasar. Let's see what it is. Okay, it says ban bond. Chastisement, we know what that means. A halt, a, a halter, restraint. Restraint. We are res we are bound to this country. That's why you Jake's all this stuff about back to Africa. Kemet and none of them guys gonna go and live in in the land of Kemet, man. And y'all need it over there in Africa, cause uh, you them them African certain African areas they're heavy into either one or two things. The the two biggest uh the two biggest the Predominant religions in Africa are two religions. Number one is Islam. Number two is Christianity. And pretty much every Nigerian person from Ghana, Sierra Leone, Senegal, any of those, uh, um, I mentioned Sierra Leone, Benin, Benin, either they're Islamic or they're Christian. It's almost like if I run into a Nigerian and we start talking, yeah, I'm Christian. Then the next person I run to, I'm Muslim. They, they, they fucked up. Either, either Esau got you or, the, or the, the Arabs got your ass. So you guys should just pack up and move to Africa to wake them up. Because there's more so-called quote-unquote conscious people in America. And, 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 and Professor Small said that on, on a, one of the Sarnetta's Sarnetta, uh, show. He said, them people in Africa... Um, a more brainwashed, and how do you how do you say? It? He said, "There's more conscious people over here in America than there are in Africa." I remember him, him saying that. This was years ago, and I happened to meet, meet, meet uh, and talk to uh, me and a couple other brothers to Professor Small. Now I remember him uh, when he had. They showed a picture of him when he was young. He had a full head of uh, dreadlocks that were jet black, not a, not a lick, lick of gray on him. That's when I, that's when I talked to him. That's when me and, the, and a couple of brothers talked to him. <laughs> and he invited us to his class at the university up there in Harlem. Because Aria went there. Aria met him, I believe. Shia met him. Anyway, let me get back into this. It says a bond is a chastisement, figur figuratively restraint, because, it, because what restrains you? That paperwork, your social security number. If, if you try to, take your, try to take your black ass from America to Africa without a passport, see how far you get. That's another adhesion contract. And I used to have a uh, passport years ago. I mean, once you get it, you're good for 10 years. Okay, let me, let me see what else I can pick up from this. Bam, bond. Uh, just picking out words. Bands, accusative, after. They give you precepts too. Restraining, bands. Of wild, of wild ass. Wait a minute. 
doesn't the scripture speak of, speak of the is of Israelites being as a wild ass used to the used to the wilderness? Let me see if the command is up in here. It should be. A lot of good precepts. Uh, okay, little sim symbolic of the rule of Nebuchadnezzar bonds imposed by the Assyrians. Yep, on the Israelites. So the bonds is is all uh, are those uh, adhesion contracts. When when the, when the most I come, you ain't you ain't gonna remember your. It's a fucking shame that you can memorize. You might use your. They might ask you for your full social security number once every twenty years, and you remember that shit on the spot. It's a damn shame. You got you got your mind. Anyway. Let me move from this subject here. Where the hell am I? Anyway, bond is is what just re rewind it and you get the definition. It says uh, seven verse. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is only going to happen one time, and it's getting ready to happen. But he shall be saved. That he represents the elect of Israel shall be saved out of it. It shall come to pass when that day say of Yahweh the ho of hosts, thou will break his yoke from off thy neck. Uh, Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Which now you don't see too many yokes on us, but we're yoked through paperwork, adhesion contracts, and we'll burst thy bonds and adhesion contracts, social security number, driver's license. And strangers, other nations, may, number one on the list, Esau, shall no more serve themselves of him. They're not, they're not going to use us no more. But they shall ser serve Yahweh their power, and David a king. So we're going to serve David, David the king, whom I will raise up unto them. So David is not dead. That's all I want to deal with on that. Uh, so let's go to the next, if I can find it. Okay, boom. So that's the video, Slavery by Another Name. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try my best uh, to, if I do it now, I'll fall asleep listening to it so I won't get it, but I wanna at least try to watch most of it, maybe tonight. Okay, so this is the second video. What I entitle this, what scriptures should come to your mind? Okay, you got to go through a damn commercial. Okay, this is uh, a call for an uprising. I subscribe to this guy. But check this out. This is as of today, February 1st, 2022. The year of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai turning up. It says in India to launch its own digital currency in 2022-2023. That's the date published Tuesday today, February 1st, 2022. Indian Central Bank will issue a digital rupee, that's the money of India, in 2022-2023 financial year, which begins April 1st.
I'm going to just let it play. Listen up. What scriptures, not scripture, what scriptures should come to mind when you watch this? What scriptures with an S, plural, should come to mind when you watch this? Old Testament and New Testament, especially the book of Revelation. Let's listen up. Then I'm going to close. Big money maker here on YouTube. And to each their own, if people want to talk about that. And they're fascinated with buy it and in it and investing in it. Go ahead. But here I like to talk about cryptocurrency and NFTs and all this stuff <laughs> because it has everything to do with the digital order and digital currency. Because digital currency has to do with taking the mark. The mark of what you might ask? The mark. I didn't want you to hear that. This lady escaped the New World Order's control. Get away from the Federal Reserve. It is, in fact, becoming centralized. Just ask India, who is now officially getting into the cryptocurrency universe by launching their own digital currency. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because they're one of the world's largest economies. And after them, it's going to continue and continue worldwide. He said it's going to continue, and it's going to continue, and it's going to be worldwide. What scriptures should come to mind? What scriptures with the S should come to mind? Then it's going to be a worldwide universal digital currency. But let's listen to India as they've decided that they're going to get control of this, and they're going to tax and have a centralized digital currency of their own, starting not in 10 years, not in five, this year. Take a look. Introduction of a central bank. Listen to this woman right here. She's the uh, financial minister, minister of the whole country and a woman. You got to ask yourself, what goes on behind closed doors? Did she have a dream about this thing and say, yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. That's why I said, whatever scriptures come to mind. When we were boosted, a big boost to the digital economy, digital currency, they also need to... By the way, that's how heathens clap. That's how they clap. And cheaper currency management system. It is Look at them dismal bastards. Look at how they clap. I mean, Esau claps more spirit than that. That's how they clap. They ain't shaking their head. They ain't doing nothing but hitting the goddamn table, man. Goddamn. That's the heathen for you. to introduce digital rupees using blockchain and other technology to be issued by the Reserve Bank of India starting 2022 and 23. In recent years, digital banking, digital payments, and fintech innovations have grown at a rapid pace in the country. Government is considered... Why isn't the fuck is she speaking her own language? This is, she's not at the UN. She's in motherfucking India. Why is she speaking English? Think about it. To ensure that the benefits of digital banking reach every nook new, new and corner of the country in a consumer friendly manner. Taking forward this agenda and to mark 75 years of our independence, it is proposed to set up 75 digital banking units in 75 districts of the country by schedule. Wait a minute, I got to bring this back, man. Hold up, hold up. Look at this guy right here. And then look at him. Look at mainly him. Look at him. It's called a heathenistic clap. <laughs> 
Oh my lord. In, groups in 75 districts of the country by scheduled commercial banks. Today, India is making headlines. It has been resistant to legalizing cryptocurrency, but may have taken some steps, steps now in that direction. At least that seems to be how it's being interpreted. Our David Holler covers cryptocurrency for us. So uh, walk us through this move and what it means. From these outlets have been taking it to mean cryptocurrency. Uh, so there'd be a tax of 30% on cryptocurrency, which is um, good for a lot of people, especially the uh, investors in the country, because uh, India is one of the countries that has, has gone uh, back and forth a lot in terms of whether or not they want to ban crypto. What they're going to do to make the Oikomeni accept a digital currency, um, I don't know how it is in your state. But in the tri-state area, even beyond the tri-state area, if you go through a toll and you don't have the, um, what do you call it, the easy pass, they don't even tell you what the price is. I, I've uh, dri driven through New Jersey, Jersey Turnpike. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Garden State Parkway, other parkways and highways in Jersey and in New York. They don't, they don't even tell you how much you got to pay. They'll say, we'll send you the bill in the mail. Some of them, some of them will actually tell you that uh, what the price is. And if, if you don't have the easy pass, the price might be $8. If you have the easy pass, it might be $2. So you're going to say, ah, I'm not going to deal with that digital stuff. Well, guess what? You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to keep paying that extra $6. So it forces you, if you want to get that better price, to get the easy pass. So I have one. I believe Gabar, well, I know Gabar has one. Because we, you know, driving wherever you got to go, New Jersey, New York, whatever, you're going to hit those tolls. And then it, take, it digitally takes it out of your account. All right? So that's what they're going to do everywhere. Okay, you can use regular cash. But it's going to cost you an extra 25%, an extra 30%. And that adds up. Okay, let, let you listen to a little bit more. We're trying to figure out how to regulate it somehow. So this is a really positive move for crypto investors to encourage some sort of effort to regulate um, the technology. And also on the other side, uh, India is also sort of setting dates for their CBDC rollout. So the central bank uh, is also going to sort of start testing and piloting the digital currency. Um, and they've said, given a date for the launch of that currency to the public for sometime this year or next year. So two, two sort of uh, milestones being taken on different sides. Of the he said, he said, uh, uh, CBDC, which is an acronym for Central Bank Digital Currency. And they're going to do it. They're going to do away with the paper dollar. And anytime you buy or sell, you're going to have to use that digital currency because they're going to, the, the, the paper dollar, the paper that we used to, is going to be obsolete. Look that word up. Listen, listen, keep listening. The main part I wanted you to listen to is uh, what happened in India. But okay, this is the guy from uh, the, uh, the call for uprising. Makes good, great videos. So the concerns here, again, are the fact that by having a digital currency, by eliminating Physical currency is one step closer to the mark. I get it. People are like, but call. We use things like PayPal. We've heard about this stuff for a decade. They've been talking about cashless. Why do you think they've been prepping people to accept it? The more they beat it into people's heads, the more that they're ready for it when it happens. They've been doing limits, right, on how much money you could withdraw from the bank if you're not aware they have. 
They've been because they don't want people stuffing under the mattress. But eventually, of course, everything will be digital and it won't be worth anything. But they've also been doing a massive, massive attack on coins, right? We can't go to the laundry because no, but there's a coin shortage. We can't give you a check to your restaurant. This is all part of the digital currency plan. And India, in terms of this digital rupee, is right in line with the New World Order's plan. So India's central bank will launch the digital version of the rupee in the next financial year. Uh, and by the way, don't ask me what the Within the next, within this year, we're already in 2022. So he said the official date is April 1st, uh, 2022. So we're talking, here we are in February, in two months, it'll be officially launched. People tapping on the table has to do. And get used to it, used to it get used to it, excuse me. This digital currency will be worldwide, the new money system. And then you know what comes after that if you're part of GMS. I don't know if that's a religious thing or something. I don't know. I thought for a second they were all killing bugs. No, that's the way the heathens clap. I don't know. But they were tapping on the table. They seemed excited about the new world order currency. Uh, and again, India's specific one won't be, but centralized digital currency is going to happen worldwide. We know in America, the feds are already planning on it, right? So that little map in the research stage, there's a lot of places that are in the research stage, and then of course, the places that have rolled forward with it. And then you have the launching in a place like India, and then you watch dominoes fall. So, the introduction of a central bank digital currency, is, like the woman said, will give a boost to the digital economy. This is all back talk to make people know a boost to the economy. So, it sounds good. We need that thing. Digital currency will also lead to a more efficient and cheaper currency, currency management system, and they'll be taxing. 30% as per. Uh, the Reserve Bank of India will introduce digital rupee this year. Blockchain, uh, sorry, uh, the woman who spoke gave no details. <laughs> anyway, if you want to watch the rest of this, you can watch the rest of this, you know, on your own time. But uh, this woman right here, she's a finance uh, uh, minister, minister of finance. Um, come on, man. You know, you know what happened. You know, this India has been, has bought, been bought and paid for a long time ago. Anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalawam. I made it a little bit long. Please forgive me. Um, Shalawam.